Lots of speculation on whether Indiana Jones is going to be exclusive to Xbox. Plus, we got some other news on some upcoming games. So let's get into it. So the exclusives debate is something that will never end. It is something that people always want to see. They want to see that the console that they have has games that other people aren't able to play that's pretty much all exclusives are they are a marketing avenue to get people to go out and buy a console because that's the only place that you're going to be able to play certain games now we've seen this generation with the launch of the xbox series x and s that console exclusives in no way hinder cannibalize the sales of a console and in my opinion it is pretty much a dying form for the video game industry if you want to be at the top we're seeing playstation slowly transition away from that as they are going to be putting a lot Lot more of their games on pc because they know that if they can get their games in multiple different areas people are going to spend more money within their network spend more money on microtransactions and stuff like that and overall they're just going to have a lot more revenue if you open up your player base to millions more people and this brings us back now to indiana jones indiana jones is a game that's being worked on by bethesda it is one of those games i think that now with an xbox game studios is a huge opportunity for xbox to get that big blockbuster third person narrative driven style of game similar to many of the playstation games and people argue that xbox doesn't have a prominent game like that indiana jones could definitely be that now we haven't seen anything of this game yet maybe we'll see something on june 12th maybe not but there is a big debate going on right now as to whether this game is going to be an xbox exclusive or not so jess corden on the xbox 2 podcast had this to say the only information i've had on indiana jones is that it wasn't exclusive but that was a long time ago maybe something has changed and we know machine games is working on this game and this game was contracted in development or had started before Xbox had bought Bethesda, meaning that if that deal hadn't occurred, more than likely this game would have been a multi-platform game available everywhere. Now things potentially could change because Xbox now owns Bethesda. And we have special Nick here having a difference of opinion. As he says here, last i was told it was exclusive and this is a response to the reddit post with the rumor going around as to what jez corden said that he last heard information that it was still going to be a multi-platform game now overall here is my opinion on all of this stuff when it comes to exclusives indiana jones and it being exclusive to the xbox platform xbox ecosystem i think you guys pretty much already know my stance when it comes to exclusives i personally couldn't care less as long as these games come to xbox game pass on day one that's to me where the value is in xbox if they get their games on that subscription service where you're paying 15 dollars a month which they are i mean it's not if they are getting their games day one on that service we're going to be getting all the xbox game studios games we're going to be getting all the activision blizzard games we're going to be getting the upcoming call of duties all into xbox game pass at some point the service itself, the value from the Xbox Game Pass service is unbeatable. There is not going to be another service out there that I think will be able to touch what Xbox Game Pass has, especially as they continue to accumulate all of those studios. And to me, that's where the value is. Making sure those games are on Xbox Game Pass on day one, and I couldn't care less if they are available anywhere else, even if they release day one on other platforms. A lot of people want to see Indiana Jones. They want to see every single Xbox game studio game being locked to the Xbox ecosystem. Now, when it comes to a lot of the Bethesda games, Phil Spencer has already said that those games will be available wherever Xbox Game Pass is. So people are going to get what they want, which is the exclusivity for the Xbox ecosystem. But the reason I don't really care because is when you sit back and you think about these games, you think about PlayStation, you think about Microsoft, and when they put their games exclusive to a single box or to a single platform, as a consumer, we gain absolutely nothing from that. We gain absolutely nothing from other people not being able to experience games. The only way that I would say it would be detrimental if they decide not to make the game exclusive is if by doing that, they are going to be hurting their business in a way that they are going to be making less money overall, which will then make further games and further acquisitions and all that type of stuff less likely or less quality. 
And that's where we need to care about these things. If you're a consumer, just what is the quality? What is the type of content we are getting on these services? And if it is good, then it doesn't matter where else it releases. In fact, putting these games on different platforms, putting these games multi-platform will end up making Xbox more money in the long run. I mean, that's something that we've already seen. You saw what happened with the PlayStation games when they put their games on PC, how much more money they made by putting God of War, Days Gone, Horizon on PC with their overall revenues. And Microsoft is doing the same thing. The reason why Xbox is able to keep games locked to the ecosystem and the platform is because they've created an ecosystem and a platform that has opened up to so many different avenues, so many different screens that people can play on PC, console, mobile phone, soon to have a streaming stick, all of this type of stuff. They've made it so that yes, we can still say games are exclusive to our ecosystem, but they're still going to be accessible on multiple platforms. So exclusivity at the end of the day, going forward with the video game business and the video game industry is actually a more of a hindrance in terms of how much money can be made and how much better content and how much more content we're going to be able to get in the future. So there's going to be certain games that Xbox decides, hey, I'm going to also release this on PlayStation because we need to be able to make as much money as possible on this to order to get return on our investment. And Indiana Jones may be one of those games that they need to release on PlayStation because it is a single player game. It is a game where they're not going to be getting continuous microtransactions and continuous store purchases through the Xbox ecosystem. So by launching it out to PlayStation as well, they're going to be able to make a lot more money off of this game, which they will be able to use to give us more content for Xbox Game Pass day one stuff in the future. But hey, that's the way I see it. I mean, I don't care. I really don't care about the exclusivity as long as those games launch onto Xbox Game Pass on day one because we don't gain anything from it. I know there is the, the argument that people feel like they're not being given everything from the company, the box that they have decided to support and purchase. But as a consumer, you're just literally buying the product to play games on it. And if that product gives you enough great content, which it does with Xbox Game Pass, it shouldn't really matter. Now we go through the comments here. You can see just the difference of opinions amongst a lot of people. You have special Nick here again, replying to this saying, the funny thing is Jez and I went back and forth with this in August last year. It was a rumor. It was in the rumor mill back then. You have Hazard or Gaming saying, what are the chances of Phil saying, it's okay, let's put it on Game Pass and let it be on PlayStation because he doesn't like doing those types of deals. We know Microsoft made a decision like KOTOR and I wouldn't be surprised if this happens. They're going to look at just the overall economics of a game like Indiana Jones and if it would be more beneficial for the return on investment to put it on to PlayStation and then they are, are going to be able to pass it off as this was something that was already in the deal and they're honoring the previous deal they're not going to be breaking that deal now if this was a game that just got announced tomorrow or yesterday or whatever it's probably not going to be going to PlayStation and that wouldn't be surprising at all because they are building out that ecosystem where they can still capitalize on different platforms to make a lot of money. And I guess the other argument that people always like to throw out there is that PlayStation doesn't do this. PlayStation doesn't put their games onto Xbox. They do timed exclusivity and that's completely correct. So you can see the frustration from gamers as to that happening. So they want Xbox to do the same, but I feel like going forward, you're going to see PlayStation start to do less of that. And that's why they're building out their PC stuff. That's why they're trying to put more games onto PC. They're potentially even going to be building out a PC launcher and they know that they're not going to be able to compete going forward if they continue to just release games on PlayStation consoles, especially with the fact that they have the chip shortage and they can't even meet the demand right now with the PlayStation 5. So they're really holding themselves back and they've seen that. That's why they're moving so fast right now with getting more games to PC, getting more live services and building out that subscription service. And when we're continuing on here where Nick says last he was told it was an exclusive, Jez even says it might be wrong or old info. You have Ironheart Gaming here saying, I'm hoping for this game to be exclusive because I just want this on my Game Pass sub. It being multi-plat raises some concerns that Sony might have put some claws in place to make sure this is not part of any subscription service for a year or something like it was rumored for RE8. And I mean, that's a great point because you do look at Deathloop and you do look at Ghostwire Tokyo and both of those games, I say should have been day one on Xbox Game Pass. That's where it gets me more so than the exclusivity thing is when you take a game that you purchased an entire studio for, 
and you release it on the other platform for an entire year before releasing it into the service. I feel like at that point, you just take the hit there. You spend that money, you break that contract and you put the game out on PlayStation, but you also put it day one into Xbox Game Pass. That's where the value is. As long as it hits the service day one to Xbox Game Pass, that's what Xbox and Microsoft need to do going forward, especially with a game like Indiana Jones that is still a long way out from what we know about it. There's really no excuse. This isn't a game that is deep in development and about to come out similar to a death loop in Ghostwire Tokyo, where pretty much after the acquisition, this is a game that if it doesn't come out for another year or two, they need to make sure that they do what they have to do to break that contract, spend that couple million dollars. I don't know how much it would cost and make sure that this game does come onto Xbox Game Pass on day one. That's what's important. It being locked to the Xbox ecosystem and, and not anywhere else is less important in my opinion. That's the way I see it. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. I know a lot of people want to see everything exclusive, but I find that the arguments for that, no one can ever answer the question as to what does it gain for you as a consumer if other people can't play a game? What do you gain from that other than bragging rights? I mean, that's all I can think of that people gain. Okay, jumping over here to some more news about Modern Warfare 2. There is a listing that suggests that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 could also be returning to Steam. So this is interesting because the last time Call of Duty actually launched via Steam was back in 2017, so a while ago, and that was for Call of Duty World War 2. And since then, they've just been releasing games exclusively a part of Activision's Battle.net launcher. Now they're going to be launching into Steam, and I wonder if this has anything to do with the acquisition, the upcoming acquisition that will be finalized at some point between now and next year. And we know Xbox loves to release their first party games into Steam alongside their Xbox launcher, alongside Xbox Game Pass and all that type of stuff. So maybe they are preparing for that. There's also the thought that once the acquisition goes through, the Activision Blizzard launcher will be no more. It will just merge into Xbox. So maybe they're preparing to have this game launched through the Xbox store launch through xbox game pass through the xbox launcher and on steam as that's what xbox currently does maybe they're knowing that this deal is going to be closing sooner rather than later i think call of duty modern warfare 2 is very very interesting in terms of how this game is all going to play out because yes of course xbox doesn't own activision blizzard yet the deal still needs to close but the deal will close right in the heart of the release of this game at some point rather that is by the end of 2022 or into early 2023 this game is still going to be very popular very hot and it's going to be lasting a very long time so what is xbox going to do once they own modern warfare 2 how are they going to release this game are they going to put it into game pass right away i think that's what people will want to see i think that's what they need to do once they own this franchise again even if there is some sort of deal with activision blizzard and playstation something along the lines of it it can't go into xbox game pass i think once xbox fully owns it they need to do something whether that's breaking the contract or whatever to get this game into xbox game pass because that's the value that's why people sign up to the service is to get big games like this on day one or in a situation like this where a deal is going through once that deal is finalized i hope we don't see another death loop and ghostwire tokyo thing with the call of duty franchise and it coming to game pass much later because we're also hearing about the other stuff about the exclusive rights with playstation that they have the marketing deal right now for modern warfare 2 we got the leak of playstation again the open beta first plus some other additional content so all of that stuff is going to be very interesting as to how xbox handles it because you know the fans are not going to be happy seeing PlayStation getting exclusive content for a game like this when it is owned by Xbox. I think this game is going to have a much bigger impact and there's going to be a lot more people upset or annoyed once Xbox owns Activision Blizzard if there's certain stuff going to PlayStation that Xbox is not getting. Now, when it comes to PlayStation and their upcoming state of play on June 2nd, there is this rumor here. Completely take this with a grain of salt. This could be completely just bs somebody made it up made a word document and put it out there for us to talk about and here is a potential leak as to what they could be showing off so project destructive stray street fighter 6 one that i predicted that they were going to be showing off a trailer for it project eve forspoken little devil inside chia playstation vr 2 overview and then under that you have call of duty modern warfare 2 
plus PlayStation VR 2. Now, if they show off call anything Call of Duty within their state of play, it confirms, I would say, pretty much everything about the marketing rights, about PlayStation getting an open beta first. And if they show it off, especially with a brand new product, the PlayStation VR, you know that Call of Duty is being completely marketed by PlayStation even after or even up until Xbox actually owns the IP and the franchise. Then after that, there's Resident Evil Village, Last Hope Updates plus PlayStation VR 2, Avatar Frontiers Pandora with PSVR 2, Demonium with PSVR 2 and Resident Evil 4. So this is a pretty interesting list. Honestly, I'm actually very interested in what Sony is going to be doing at this show, even though this is just going to be third party content, because I mean, most of these games we're going to be getting on Xbox as well at the same time. PlayStation will just have the marketing rights for them. But something like Avatar Frontiers Pandora, very excited to see what that game's all about. And if they implement that into VR, it would be very cool. Really interested in how they're going to implement Call of Duty into PSVR or just VR in general if they go along those lines. Like, is this something you're going to be able to play a full multiplayer match in or the full campaign in? Or is it just going to be some sort of a mini game? Then you have something like Resident Evil Village and another update to the game, which is really, really exciting. And then you have Resident Evil 4, which would be the remake of Resident Evil we know Capcom and Sony and Square Enix, they are they all work together. I mean, they have lots of marketing deals with them. My biggest hope, one of the games I'm most excited for here is Street Fighter 6. My biggest hope for it is that the very least Xbox at least made sure this time that the game is also going to be releasing on the platform. And then finally, we have this news here about Sega announcing a new project with a live stream set for June 3rd. So there's going to be this stream and they're going to be talking about one of their new projects, which I'm assuming has to do with their super game. As we know with Sega super game, they announced that they are going to be working on multiple different projects with this thing. And with Sega super game, they have partnered with Xbox and Azure. So this is always something to keep your eye out. Whenever Sega has an announcement for their new projects, it's going to in some way incorporate Xbox into it because of that partnership. So we're going to be getting these games on Xbox and maybe we see some of these new projects from Sega, part of their super game initiative, end up on Xbox Game Pass. But this is on June 3rd, and it says here, while you may feel a sense of deja vu with the lineup of presenters, please look forward to the announcement, Sega teased. Further details were not announced, and as pointed out here by Twitter user Ranka, schedule the lineup of presenters, the same lineup from the Genesis and Mega Drive mini live stream from September 9th, 2019. So there will be a lot of similar information, but I'm pretty excited to see what they are going to be doing with this brand new project. Really hoping at some point in one of these streams throughout that week, up until the Xbox and Bethesda showcase, we see something about Sega or Sonic Frontiers, that new open world looking, just I think evolution of the Sonic franchise. That's it for me guys. Let me know your thoughts on Indiana Jones exclusivity. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? And if you disagree, let me know what you gain or what people gain from other people not being able to play on other platforms. What do you think about Call of Duty MW2? Do you think this game will end up on Xbox Game Pass as soon as the deal goes through? What do you think about that leaked PlayStation state of play lineup? And Sega, what do you want to see as their new project and announcements from their live stream? If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, you liked what you saw, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support and I'll catch you in the next video.